Hello and welcome to CCTV International. I'm Jennifer Shung in Beijing. History has been made. Barack Obama has been sworn in as the 44th President of the United States on the West Front of the U.S. Capitol. He's the first African American to hold that office. In his inaugural speech, the new president called for citizens to begin the work of remaking America. Liu Yinghua has more. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown has started a two-day visit to the United States. He's the first European leader to visit the White House since U.S. President Barack Obama took office. Well, back here in China, rescue operations have ended at a coal mine in Shenqi province where at least 74 people were killed in underground explosions. Authorities have begun dealing with the aftermath, which includes medical treatment for survivors, compensating bereaved families, and investigating the cause of the incident. Israeli forces started pulling out of the Gaza Strip on Monday after a tentative truce with Hamas. Palestinians are now left to take stock of the devastating three-week war that both sides are claiming victory to. Amy Bainbridge has more. Hello and welcome to this weekend edition of Sports Scene on CCTV International. I'm Jennifer Shung in Beijing. We start with English football. Manchester United have cruised into the semifinals of the FA Cup. They crushed Fulham 4-0 on Saturday. And drivers Timo Glock and Jarno Trulli are coming out of hibernation to embark on a winter fitness program. They're also playing up Toyota's prospects for the upcoming Formula One season. With their teams working to provide a competitive car for the new season, winter is the best time for a Formula One driver to get into shape. Now don't let the simple design fool you. It did take the design team about two years to come up with these uniforms, which embody both Olympic concepts and Chinese characteristics. You'll note here that the cloud pattern on the very comfortable shirt that I'm wearing is also part of the pattern on the Olympic torch. Jennifer Sheng, CCTV, Beijing. The water cube will light up the sky at night and show the world its beautiful blue colors. But as you can see, it is not just a pretty picture venue with nothing on the inside. Well, thank you very much, James. As I said, lots happening in Paris. Over to the French Open for the latest. Anna Ivanovic has won her first Grand Slam title. The provisional world number one beat 13th seeded Russian Dinar Safina in straight sets on Saturday. Ivanovic had the upper hand in the opening set with a break in the first game followed by another in the fifth to lead that 4-1. think that being a mother has changed your game out on the court. Like, do you think the maternal instinct has made you more or less aggressive with your opponents? You know, I think it's made me calmer. You know, I really do. I, I don't know as I keep playing what will happen, but, um, you know, for instance, I, you know, a couple matches when I haven't played my best, I used to maybe get a little bit more upset. And so far in this comeback, I've definitely been, a, you know, a lot more at peace with myself on court. And, you know, I hope that continues. How does that make you feel, having this chance to win an Olympic gold medal? Oh, it makes me feel, makes me feel great, I'm fortunate, you know, and, and, and blessed to, you know, you, you put on your team uniform, uh, it means a lot. Um, but when you're talking about USA, it's not it's not breaking up broken up into a region. You're not talking about East Coast fans. You're not talking about West Coast fans. You're talking about the United States of America. I'm Jennifer Shong in Guangdong. Tune into Sports Scene all week for a look at how something held as part of a traditional Chinese festival is making huge waves in the international sporting arena. Yesterday was 888, the night of the opening ceremony, but before the fireworks went off, President Hu Jintao hosted a grand banquet for dignitaries from all over the world. He thanked the international community for supporting the Beijing Olympics. Zeng Suwei has more. We all know yesterday was a huge match, basketball, China versus the United States. We're going to tip off with a bit of that. Now, can you tell me how important was it for China to make a good showing at this first game? The track and field events begin today, and we could see a drastic turn in the medals table. Two golds in athletics on offer, four in swimming. We'll be telling you what's ahead over the next 90 minutes and also review yesterday's big winners. Hello again and welcome to another edition of Culture Express here on CCTV International. I'm your host, Jennifer Shung in Beijing. Stick around because in the next 30 minutes, we'll be bringing you all the latest from the exciting world of arts and pop culture. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. What's the quintessential sound of Beijing? Peking opera, you might say. Certainly that's one, but for many who grew up in Beijing's hutongs, eating skewers of candied haws, the sound closest to their hearts is the husky hawking of street vendors. Don't be fooled, the woman here isn't making cotton candy. I don't think you want to eat this. She's actually taking silkworms and taking the inside and kind of 
stretching them over this contraption, and that's where you see all the silk lined up here. The 2008 Sundance Film Festival opened on January the 17th in Park City, Utah. It kicks off a celebration of a new generation of filmmakers with the premiere of Colin Farrell's dark comedy in Bruges. And that brings us to the end of today's edition of Culture Express. We leave you with a song from a boy band I didn't think would ever come back. Well, they proved me wrong. Backstreet's back. This one's called Inconsolable from their newly released album, Unbreakable. Hope you enjoy it. I'm Jennifer Shung in Beijing. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.